Okay, let's have a look at a lefty losing it with Ron DeSantis. The protester heckles the Florida governor, but listen to how he reacts. Fortunately, there's bad stuff that's getting into the schools. There's pornography that's getting into the schools. So the parents have had to blow the whistle in Florida. They've had to, they've had to, yeah, well, thank you, thank you. Um, we, we, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to let you impose an agenda on our kids. We're going to stand up for our kids. We're going to make sure to do it right. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Those people like that in Florida are the people we beat every single day on policy. We do not let them win. We win all these battles. We're not letting them indoctrinate our kids, not on our watch. And he's right. He does win the battles. He has turned a purple state deep red because he fights these ideological battles. He doesn't just uh, shy away from them like our politicians do in this country. They were well, conservative politicians. The left ones fight a day and night. But he, he has actually taken these issues and made them a vote winner for them. And even Miami. He's won Miami. I never thought that would happen. He's one of the most successful governors of modern times. We just think about it. he won, he eked out a victory and... Uh, the previous election by mm. one or two points, and I think it was 19 points yeah. after that in four years. Who does that? That's just incredible. Uh, and he's at his best when it comes to the culture wars, mm -hmm. and certainly when it relates to children and what's in the school curriculum and all of that, you, you can see he really cares about it and comes to life on mm. that. Um, and also, actually, just the COVID topic we talked about, he was a shining beacon in a world gone mad of uh, governors Absolutely. all over. Absolutely. So. Florida was open. I think they only locked down for a couple of weeks. The schools were open, the, and... Uh, and when I went through Florida for the midterms, uh, that was a uh, something that the locals said over and over again. Mm. He kept us open during during the pandemic, and that they were thankful for that. So it, it, it was not a controversial decision by then, mm -hmm. but certainly at the time, he was called a murderer, a mass killer. He was attacked around the world for those policies. He was. And Floridians are still standing. They didn't get exterminated by no, the pandemic. No, he has been absolutely vindicated. Now, let's look at what the governor was talking about when he was saying uh, we don't want our children indoctrinated in schools. Let's have a look at what's been happening. Happy Pride, everyone. It's June 1st, the start of Pride Month. I pledge allegiance to the queers. <laughs> The LGBTQ plus board I made it. Our school. This has been my first year in preschool with a class of my own teaching alongside another queer neurodivergent educator. We've been talking about gender and skin color and consent and empathy and our bodies and autonomy. It's been fabulous. fabulous. Well, you see, we keep hearing, oh, no, no, no one's indoctrinating the kids, but there seems to be a lot of indoctrinating happening right there. Now, let's hear from Queen Jean-Pierre claiming that the president has no position on when children should be allowed to undergo irreversible therapies and surgeries. Does the president have a position on at what age these kinds of therapies and surgeries are appropriate? That's something for uh, a child and, and their parents to decide. It's not something that we believe uh, should be decided by, uh, by legislators. Well, that's just not true. I remember throughout the election campaign and since he's become president, he's advocated strongly for these rights. So to pretend that this is a issue that he's just washed his hands off and left it to the medical profession and parents is not the case, Kosha. Mm -hmm. And again, the inconsistency that we talk about, it's that's like a classic playbook that, you know, that's not for legislators to decide, it's for parents and kids. You could apply that to abortion, mm. you could apply that to whether you want to take a vaccine or not, yeah, yeah. and they don't. That's where you do see government interjecting uh, to do that. So it, it is disingenuous. Mm. Um, and it's interesting that they don't want to come out and take that position. I think the reason is the base uh, of the Democrat Party doesn't want them mm. to come out and take 
a position that I think would match up with actually where the mainstream, even of their party, is. Yes. And so he's trying, they're trying to sidestep it in a way. Well, the mainstream, I think, of, of the Democrats would be very much on the side of, yeah, let's wait until they're at least 18 before these sort of surgeries and treatments are entered into. But the radicals are running the agenda and they will just not allow the White House to, to come out and state that. Now, it is Pride Month and rainbow and trans flags are everywhere. Many are asking, is this really an oppressed movement? Doesn't look to be much oppression happening there. I mean, you know, you've got every corporate kosher, every uh, government agency, celebrities, sporting bodies, everybody's coming out pledging allegiance. I mean, really, is this uh, a movement that is faced with oppression, crippling oppression, that it needs a Pride Month? Wouldn't seem that way. Uh, and I think there's two months. There's Pride Month and then there's something else in October that comes Oh, there's so, so many other days as well. I went through this about a week or two ago because there's so many separate days. There's a, da a day for pronouns. There's a day for, what's it called, Ida Hobbit, International Day Against right. uh, Homophobia, Transphobia, Biphobia. There's just a, a bunch of days. But Pride is, is a month where we just see saturation coverage mm -hmm. almost and of, it's of this issue. It's expanding. So it's not. I think what's happening is there's a conflation of acceptance and inclusion, which most people are good people. And I think, mm. you know, regardless of sexual orientation or whatever else it may be, people don't, for the most part, um, are not prejudiced anymore. Mm. But it's being conflated with having it filter down into curriculum, into onto stages yes. that children are attending, you know, putting it out in the open. That's the issue I think where contention is. And it's sort of getting wrapped up in saying that you're just against the people, which most people are not. It's Absolutely. Two separate things. And I spoke to Blair White uh, last week and I've spoken to um, other people who, who identify as LGBT. Blair's uh, a, a trans woman. And they're saying that th there's definitely been a shift where this is no longer about acceptance and equality it's become a political movement and that's how people see it they see the pride uh, sorry they see the rainbow or the trans flag as a as a political symbol and that's where the objection comes in it's not against people's lifestyles it's against being compelled to um you know declare your pronouns or you're you're a bigot and of course when we've got pride month and flags everywhere you've also got Prides, and we're being told these are family-friendly parades. Let's have a look at one that does not look family-friendly to me. Wowie, yes. Uh, and it went on and on. Trust me, we haven't shown you the worst of it. Uh, Kosha reportedly kids in that crowd. I mean, really, it's 2023. We live in the West. Do we need to be celebrating anyone's sexual orientation anymore? I mean, it seems like it's almost pushing the envelope to a point where very reasonable, live and let live people are going to start objecting. Mm -hmm. It's that issue again that they're conflating acceptance and equality with sexualization and fetishization, even one could say, of all sorts of things on the spectrum of sexual behavior mm -hmm. out in the open, in the middle of the day where <laughs> potentially children are there. And that's, I think, what people are objecting to. It's being wrapped up again and being about a battle that's kind of won. They've won that. It's it's not a thing anymore to be against. Well, we don't see the thing. local strippers from Bar 20 parading down the street, you know, the sort of uh, uh, celebrating their lifestyle choices. I don't know why we need to be doing this either. But uh, here we are.